to the Clover Tack channel guys and uh, tonight real quick hopefully I'm gonna go over a couple of things uh, on this uh, Smith & Wesson Model 38 Airway. Uh, got a friend uh, picked this up uh, it's definitely an older model and the first issue that we were having with it was the cylinder was dragging. You can see here it spins free now. Okay, uh, it wasn't. It would get to a certain point and it would drag. The issue with it ended up being the ejector pin here. Okay, and was a pretty easy swap. I uh, had to find the parts, but once we did, the actual swap for it was easy. Um, one thing to keep in mind on this, it's reverse thread. So it's uh, lefty, tidy, righty, loosey when you go to take it out. Uh, need to be careful just a little bit because there is a spring and everything in here as well. So anyway, we got that changed. So we got the extractor pin replaced. Everything freed up as you can see, cylinder turned smooth. Um, but we still had issues. We had issues where we had uh, weird strikes on the primers. We had issues where the primers would strike and the primer would, would back up and essentially lock the cylinder down and to more or less pry it open. Now, once we got in here, what we figured out uh, the issue to be was a couple of things. The main issue was that this hammer nose, uh, and you can see this is a, it's a shrouded hammer, of course, and I think they call that a, uh, a semi-spur. But anyway, um, doesn't really have a firing pin. The firing pin portion is built onto that uh, hammer nose. But the hammer nose had probably been striking this cylinder, okay? And it had it in a, in a weird shape. It wasn't round like most firing pins. And it was also bent a little bit. As we tore into it, um, I had never gotten into one of these before. That's why I wanted to make this video. But as we got into it, I found that the mainspring here which is what is going to uh, create the pressure okay, that drops the hammer with force. Somebody had cut some links out of that and the reason for doing that would be to lighten the trigger pull. It's primarily a double action revolver uh, though you can still grab the semi spur uh, and cock it back. And what I found that probably had happened, I noticed that with the replacement hammer nose, it didn't seem like the firing pin portion of it was as long. And I got to looking and I seen some tooling marks and it looked like they sort of extruded the hammer that was in there, actually made it a little bit longer. Uh, and so that was the things that was causing the issue after we replaced the extractor pin. I tore into this, I thought, well, I don't know how difficult it'll be, but um, come to find out it was it was really easy for replacing that, that firing pin, the hammer nose, and also the, the mainspring. Uh, not a problem at all to do. We're gonna run through it real quick here. Uh, first thing we're gonna do is to get the grips off here. And you've just got one screw on one side goes all the way through, it'll screw into the grip on the other side. Lay those to the side, of course. And of course right here is our mainspring. 
Now, we've got three screws in the side plate on this model. Uh, you'll notice two have a round head, one is a flat. The flat goes in the back because it goes underneath the grips, okay? Remember that. The other thing to remember is that the cylinder is held in by this screw right here, and once you take it off and get the side plate off, you'll notice that, okay? Um, so, probably best to leave the cylinder locked up. Uh, I'll show you here in a minute, but the cylinder release also blocks the hammer from coming back in here, and if the cylinder's in place, it makes that a lot easier. So we'll take these out now. Okay, three screws are out. This side plate you can get underneath the frame right here. Just pry a little bit. It's got a little tab that goes under the frame right here, okay? So you want to lift up from the bottom and pull it out. Okay, with the side plate off, you can see everything in here, okay? What we're concerned with here is going to be the hammer. Uh, hammer nose is in this area right now and the main spring, okay? First thing we want to do just put pressure on this main spring. You're going to lift it up on this end. Okay. Now, the only thing that's holding this spring on is you've got a cap here. Okay. And it hangs in this part of the frame. So you want to make sure that your finger or something is over that as you lift. There's not a whole lot of pressure on it. But if you don't catch it, it will fly out and, and go across the room. So. You can see it's that easy, but notice we got spring, plunger, and our cap. Okay. <laughs> okay, now with that out, we don't have any pressure on this hammer anymore. It's really simple. Um, you're going to pull the trigger all the way back. And when you do, the hammer will lift out. Like that right there slowly let off the trigger okay and there we go so there we have everything apart to do what we need to do if we needed to replace the uh, the main spring here uh, it's just a matter of pulling that off putting the new one on and then that's ready to go back together the hammer nose a little more difficult okay notice part right here okay is the hammer nose it's got a rivet pin in it okay that's got to be drove out and then you can put the new one in drive the new pin in and you're good to go okay this did require a little bit of fitting okay it didn't want to fit in the groove and in the hole uh, in the revolver very well okay what I actually did was go ahead and put it in there. I tried it. It stuck in the hole. I had to pry it back. And I actually uh, took uh, some files, really fine files after it. Filed a little bit slowly, slowly on each side. Uh, and eventually got good clearance. Uh, I checked everything out. Now we go back together with it and it's the reverse. It's just as easy. Pull the trigger all the way back. Hold it back. Drop the hammer in, so that it off the trigger. Okay, main spring, same way. You can hold this plunger. Okay, got to watch it. It's got a little divot right here. I don't know if you can see it. Probably not. The camera angle is reversed, just in case you're wondering. But the divot is right in here, this area. Okay going to sit in that divot okay make sure that this cap you've got whoops it's got a hole in it okay make sure you push back and you get the rod going through the cap and just push that cap back as you push down and it clicked into place we're good 
Okay, now go back with the side plate. Remember, you've got a tab right here. It's going to slide under the frame. Put that top portion in first. Press all that down really good. Now it's time for the screws. Remember, we have one with a flat head. It's going to go on the back because it's under the grip. Remember the front one is going to hold the cylinder in place. And then there's one down here just for good measure. Ready for the grips. The side without the screw goes on first, flip it over. And we're back together. Now I've already obviously done all the repairs on everything. Uh, just wanted to go back and make a quick video in case anybody's got one of these. Um, there's several that are similar models to this that are newer models. Um, everything in them is going to work the same way. Um, parts are fairly available. Uh, I noticed that uh, the Gun Park Corp or Numerich uh, had a lot of the stuff for these. Uh, we've also got Gun Garage or Jack First. Uh, that can help you out with parts. Uh, I lucked out and found a guy that had the parts I needed locally, uh, so I did not have to order them in. But she's shooting fine now. I uh, ran 20, 30 rounds of uh, some of my hand loaded wad cutters through it earlier. Uh, previously, three to four out of every 12 or 15 I had an issue with, and she ran through those 20 or 30 flawlessly. So I want to thank you again for joining us on the channel. Uh, those of you that have one of these or have been looking for some help, uh, hope you found it informative. We invite you to go like our Facebook page. Uh, currently, you'll need to check the date on the video, but currently we have a uh, giveaway going on there for a AR-15 bolt carrier group. Uh, so be sure to like that page, uh, look up the post for that giveaway, follow the instructions, and uh, get signed up to win. Until next time, stay frosty and stay safe, guys.